Hey guys, it's Chris and welcome back to K97.5, the best in music. And this video is sponsored by Smokescreen. You guys have asked and Smokescreen has delivered with t-shirts and hoodies now available. So pick up your fresh design at teespring.com slash store slash smokescreen vids. A link will be available in the description below. So check those out and enjoy the video. Hello Ice and Fire Nerds, this is Chris and this is going to be a little Game of Thrones Season 7 speculation video and we're going to talk about Valyrian Steel. So let's talk about the Valyrian Steel Swords, what happened to some of those and will one of those be important to the end game of our story. Alright, so let's jump right in to keep this short and sweet. And the first one we have is Blackfire. Now, Blackfire was one of two house ancestral swords of House Targaryen. And of course, it was carried by Aegon the Conqueror and was passed down to every Targaryen king after Aegon. Eventually, Aegon IV legitimized his bastards and gave the sword Blackfire to his now legitimized son, Daemon Blackfire. And of course, he's the one who founded House Blackfire and then, of course, wanted the throne for himself and started the Blackfire rebellions. And those were all repelled by Blood Raven, aka Brendan Rivers, aka the Three Eyed Crow, aka the Three Eyed Raven. Damn, he's got a lot of nicknames. Now, this sword was lost during the Blackfire Rebellions. It could be an Esso somewhere, but nobody really knows its whereabouts, so I highly doubt we'll ever see it again in our story, at least in the show. And then, of course, we have Dark Sister. Now, Dark Sister was the other House Targaryen ancestral sword, and it was originally carried by Visenya Targaryen. She was one of the two sister wives of Aegon the Conqueror, and eventually this got passed down to another great bastard, a half-brother of Daemon Blackfire, and that would be Brendan Rivers, a.k.a. Blood Raven. Now, it's really unknown what happened to this sword as well. Apparently, he did take it to the wall with him when he became Lord Commander of the Night's Watch, and, of course, he disappeared several years later beyond the wall and became the last green seer that we know today, the Three-Eyed Crow, Blood Raven, the one that recruited Bran Stark. I had actually said in one of my Season 6 review videos that I thought Mira had grabbed a sword from the cave of Bloodraven, and of course I thought that sword could have been Dark Sister since of course Bloodraven had this sword with him all these years, and that was from the scene where Benjen is sitting around feeding rabbit blood to Bran after he came to the rescue as Cold Hands, and there was a sword leaning against a tree, and of course I thought this could be Dark Sister. It would have been very cool to see that, but after I went back and checked Season 1, it was in fact the same sword Benjen had with him at the Night's Watch, so the whole whole time it was just Benjen who had taken his sword off and leaned it against the tree. Just a castle forged steel sword that looked pretty badass, but it was not Dark Sister. So at least in the show, it's very unlikely that we'll ever see that blade again as well. And then of course we come to Ice. Ice of course is the House Ancestral Sword of House Stark. It is a great sword. We saw Ned take off Will's head in Season 1, Episode 1, Winter is Coming, when he deserted the Night's Watch due to the fact that he saw the White Walkers. And of course, sadly, later on at the end of the season, Ned lost his own head with Ice by Sir Ilan Payne under Joffrey's command. Now, of course, after the Red Wedding and essentially the defeat of House Stark, Tywin Lannister had Tybo Mott, the blacksmith in King's Landing who Gendry was under, melt ice down into two other Valyrian steel swords now known as Oathkeeper and, of course, Widow's Will. Oathkeeper is now with Brienne, of course, given to her by Jaime. Widow's Will was given to Joffrey for his wedding gift and apparently buried with him in the Great Sept of Baelor, now blown to shit by Cersei Lannister and the Wildfire. So we'll probably never see that one again either. Although in the books, apparently it is still in the possession of Cersei. And then, of course, we have Longclaw. This is the House Ancestral Sword of House Mormont of Bear Island. And, of course, it was given to Jon Snow by Lord Commander Mormont. This did belong to Captain Friend's own Jorah Mormont, but he brought shame on his house when he sold poachers as slaves. And that's why he was banished across the Narrow Sea in the first place. We know from the show and books that after Jon saved Lord Commander Mormont's life from the White who turned and tried to kill him, he took the bear off the hilt, replaced it with a white wolf, and gave it to Jon. And Jon, of course, carries it to this day. And then we come to House Lannister and their ancestral sword called Bright Roar. Now, Bright Roar has disappeared as well. It was originally carried off by King Tommen Lannister to an expedition to Old Valyria and was never recovered. In more recent history, however, Tywin Lannister's younger brother, Garyon Lannister, went over on an expedition to try to recover Bright Roar, but nobody ever returned from that expedition. So apparently that didn't turn out too damn well. And then of course we have Heartsbane, the House Ancestral Sword of House Tarly. And of course we saw in Season 6 Sam steal Heartsbane from his asshole father Randall Tarly as he headed to Old Town to the Citadel with Gilly. Now I think Heartsbane will be important in our story and Heartsbane itself is a peculiar name so I think we will see Heartsbane again in our story for sure. I don't think they show Sam taking that for no reason at all other than just perhaps spotting his father which I could see being 50% of the reason he took it in the first place. So those are the major Valyrian still 
swords in our story, there are a few more such as Red Rain from House Drum, Nightfall from House Harlaw, as well as Lady Forlorn from House Corbray. Now we're very unlikely to see these swords, especially in the show, because these houses hadn't even been featured in the show at all, but it's possible they show up again in the books. Although all Valyrian steel should be relatively important since it's kind of needed to kill White Walkers along with Dragonglass. And there are also various other Valyrian steel daggers and stuff throughout our story, at least in the books, but we do know of one dagger in the show at least, and that was the one the Cat's Paw tried to use to kill Bran, and we never really found out in the show what happened to that particular dagger after the War of the Five Kings started. Apparently it did belong to Littlefinger, but he he says he lost it in a bet to Tyrion Lannister. That was bullshit to start the whole damn thing in the first place. And that's what Catelyn uses her proof that Tyrion in fact tried to murder Bran. So I wonder if we'll see that dagger again. And last but not least, there are rare cases of suits of armor made of Valyrian steel, and these are actually more priceless than the swords themselves, and nobody in our story except for Euron Greyjoy, at least in the books, owns a suit of Valyrian armor. So it's very, very rare, and we're very, very likely not to ever see it on the show, because Euron don't even have a fucking eye patch in the show. And he's called the Crow's Eye. So anyway, you get the idea. There are a few Valyrian steel swords left in our story, although I don't think there's enough to really do anything as far as the wars to come with the White Walkers. And I guess I could mention Dawn, the ancestral source of House Dane, not Valyrian steel, but was forged from a meteorite. And we did see that in the show, but I think that was just there to kind of be Jon's bleeding star as far as a shout out to the Azor High Prince that was promised prophecy. So anyway, out of all these Valyrian steel weapons, could we see them play an important role as far as the war for the dawn, the wars to come? Maybe, maybe not. I mean, a few people have them, but it's definitely not going to be enough to battle the White Walkers. We're not really sure how many White Walkers there are, but there's just too many whites, so they're going to have to get Dragonglass involved, Valyrian steel involved, and of course dragons. But I do think one sword in particular will have a purpose in the end game of our story, and that is Heartsbane. So think about the name Heartsbane. It kind of ties ties into the story of Nisa Nisa, where the last hero apparently tempered his sword the third time through the heart of his wife, and of course supposedly created so-called Lightbringer. What's the reason Sam took Hart's Bane from his father Randall Tarly when he headed to the Citadel? Now it could have been just for protection because he needed a sword, or it could have just been to spite his father, but I think in the end the name Hart's Bane is very, very interesting to me. And I won't get into it too deep here because this is going to go into the Jon Snow Endgame series, The Dragon Raised by Wolves, and it's certainly not that I have a concrete answer, but I just think the name Hart's Spain is very interesting, and I don't think they would show Sam stealing that sword for no reason other than having a sword by his side. He could have picked up any sword for protection on the way, just any steel sword or a dagger or what have you. So I think there's going to be a reason that Heartsbane is going to be in our story, that Sam has it. Of course, we think he's going to find some kind of secret out in the Citadel about the Long Night, perhaps another way to defeat the White Walkers, or at least the history of the Long Night, perhaps having something to do with the original pact that sent them packing and headed back up north in the first place. But it is interesting with this so-called bittersweet ending that I think somebody's going to have to sacrifice themselves, perhaps John, perhaps Danny. But Sam could discover some use for Heart Spain in the Citadel as far as how to defeat the White Walkers or something that needs to be done to defeat or push back the White Walkers, or at least come up with a pact with the White Walkers, and that could end up being someone's well, Hearts Bane. So anyway, guys, I'll leave this one short and sweet. Let me know in the comments below what you think about the Valyrian Steel Swords in our story. Will we see some of these again? Will they play a big role? And more importantly, will Hearts Bane itself, since that's what Sam has with him, and he's going to the Citadel to study and find out about the Long Night, will that play a bigger role in the end game of our story as far as a sacrifice, perhaps, or perhaps even being the Night King's Hearts Bane itself? So anyway, guys, let me know what you think. It's good to be back, so thanks for sticking with me. i got a lot more videos coming now. We're getting back on track. Be sure to like and share if you like what I do here. Thank you for all the support as usual. Be sure to subscribe to get everything. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.